Hang on, so now I got a, I know this is a new stream, so you guys are coming in. I got to find the, I got to find the chat, so I got to log back into YouTube. Yeah, so I'm not sure what's going on. What's going on? Nothing's right. I'm torn. Jordine is like, it's working. No, I, my webcam won't work for whatever reason. All right, so anyway, so you're going to have to go out, uh, go without, uh, about my, without my blessed face this morning. So anyways, I'll let a few more people roll in. Uh, yeah, well, all right, so let's just get on with it. Let me move my drawing tool. I got my chat, so we'll move that over there. Uh, I have this over there, so I'll move that. All right, so I guess we're ready to get going. Welcome to Forex Dot Today, the YouTube community of more than 20,000 foreign exchange traders. We gather here today to conduct technical and fundamental analysis with the overriding goal of planning our trades because trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, never risk money, cannot afford to lose. Guess what? My webcam's not working. <sighs> Coffee is good, though. Got to be happy for something. So anyways, hey, let's just get on with this. My name is Wayne. I'm a currency trader just like you. I've been uh, live streaming on YouTube since it was a tiny little startup before Google bought it. Yeah. And so over the years, people have asked me for um, additional resources that might help them become a success as a foreign exchange trader. So I wrote a book called Strategic and Tactical Forex Trading. Would you please give it a review? There's only 142 ratings. That's pretty good, but uh, I'd appreciate if you could leave some more. Men in Action. Thank you. June 16th left a review. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah, so very cool. I appreciate that. Uh, I am in the process of writing, well, three books on investing and, uh, well, trading. Three books on trading and one book on investing. So I guess that's four books uh, I, uh, that I'm in the process of doing. So anyways, uh, keep me excited and motivated. Please visit Amazon. You don't, you know, I don't know. People have left reviews that hadn't bought it. They've said it's the worst book ever written. Uh, one guy literally said he read it at a bookstore, pulled it off the shelf, read some of it, thought it was crap, put it back, and then went to Amazon and left a review of how terrible it is. Cool. Uh, would you do the same, please? I'd appreciate that. Ideally, it'd be a good review, but be truthful and be honest. Uh, I also created, uh, well, 20 years ago, I, I created a community called FX Bootcamp. I have now rebranded it Investor Bootcamp because I want to cover topics beyond Forex, like macroeconomics, we've already done that one, oil trading, we've already done that one. How about personal finance? How about real estate? How about venture capital? How about gold? Did I say real estate? Anyways, uh, these are all uh, subjects that we now uh, are covering or will cover at, in at Investor Bootcamp. It's a whopping 88 bucks a year. Maybe you're interested. Also, I created a company that automates your macroeconomic analysis so you can track global money flow. And we do it for multiple uh, assets. And therefore, we do comparative analysis so that we can track S&P 500, for example, or, or uh, um, Euro, so we could track Euro, the European economy versus the US economy, do comparative analysis, technical analysis, seasonality, retail positioning, as well as institutional positioning. Uh, it's really nice stuff and, and, and it has pretty colors, so you might wanna try that for eight bucks as a trial. Also, every day I meet with uh, subscribers and I do a live, we did it hours ago, uh, we do a live session and review everything. 
uh, and then it gets posted onto YouTube at 10 a.m. every morning. So it's delayed four or five hours, um, but you can watch it for free if you ain't got eight bucks. Uh, well, you can still watch it on YouTube for free, so check out the, the Quant Box YouTube channel. Okay. Also, you guys have asked me to do a, 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 a third quarter global market outlook that is going to occur on Tuesday, July 18th at 10.30 a.m., okay, where we will uh, look at uh, economic and high-frequency data to try to discern what's going to happen July, August, September. The link for that is there, uh, easy peasy lemon squeezy. You also need a trustworthy foreign exchange broker. That is Trader's Way. I've been working with them for about eight years, I, I believe. Um, hey, fast execution, speed, narrow spreads, you know, all that kind of stuff. Great, great. But I think what you want is uh, a business model that is based on your success, not their success. So, for example, I've been in this business a long time, and most brokers are out there to just churn and burn, pump and dump. Uh, that's not what Trader's Way is about. It's not some big bucket shop, and they're not just kind of trading against you and all that kind of stuff. Um, from what I've seen in the real world, they don't trade against you. They enter your trades into the interbanking system, straight through processing, ECN, boom, boom, boom. And they do what they say they're going to do, and that makes me happy to be associated with a service provider that provides us, foreign exchange traders, with a quality service. So check them out. These are all things that, uh, that you need. I'll push you in the right direction. That being said, let's get on with it. Oh, uh, one other thing I do want to show you. Uh, where's my quant box? Do I have a quant box? Uh, it's not there. It's not there. I guess I got to just log in. Uh, all right, let's pull this back up. Uh, let me go into quant box. Here's this morning's video. Uh, let me go to the pro site. And there are two amazing upgrades. Now I've sent emails to, uh, current subscribers. But maybe if you're not a current subscriber, this might pique your interest. I'm releasing 18 updates right now. And two of them uh, have been released, and I will release a couple of more over the next few days. Let me log into the database. The first one is an updated dashboard. Look how pretty that is. Oh, my God. Okay. So it gives you a very quick glance of the world. Does, helps you with your comparative analysis, the Japanese stock market, you know, compared to the UK. Look at the difference. Just amazing how overbought that Japanese stock market is. Uh, bullish assets, bearish assets. Great. But then you're like, oh, my God, what is that? What is that, Wayne? Look at that. A risk on, risk off gauge that works in real time. How does that work? So not only is the uh, dashboard been updated, Check this out. If I roll over, there's a new tool available to the pro subscribers called Risk Gauges. Oh, look at that. There we go. It's loading up. Okay. Check it out. The daily is mixed. Weekly is slightly risk off. Monthly mixed. Shows you right away. Now, why is this important? Well, QuantBox up until now has only done, only, only done comparative and analysis of macroeconomic data, uh, right? Comparative analysis of macroeconomic data. It didn't show you what the market was doing. There's a difference between economics and the market. Now check this out. This is all market. What is What are the yen futures, gold, S&P 500, the yield on the 10-year T-note, the dollar index, and the VIX. What are they doing right now? What are they doing week over week? What are they doing month over month? This is all pure market now. Not economic analysis, not comparative analysis of economic data. It's not 
that at all. It's what the market is doing. And so now with Quantbox, it does that comparative analysis. It does technical analysis. And now it's also doing market analysis and showing it to you on three different time frames and updating everything in real time. Holy crap, that is amazing. So anyway, so right now you can see either looking at the scatter plot or looking at the daily, uh, the daily risk, risk on risk off gauge. Right now we're going into the New York session, neutral. Yesterday this time we were neutral and then the stock market opened at 930 and this clicked over to risk on. And everything that should have been up was up. Amazing. Amazing, amazing. So that's available to uh, pro subscribers at quantbox.co. You should check it out, bro. So, awesome. Super excited about that. All right. Let's take a look. Uh, where should we start? Uh, I guess we're okay here. Let's just start here. Let's look at my oh my to WTI. Okay. Technically still on the bear zone, but who knows? You might want to look at oil. How can you get more information about oil? Oh, well, you could go to Okay, and see right now It's neutral seasonally down, but things might change soon Technically it up. It's up seasonally. It's down Retail's 50-50. U.S., uh, or sorry, institutional investors are a little more bullish than that. Retail really has no idea. It's exactly 50-50, which is kind of interesting, right? And so you might want to look at things like smart money and see where the smart money is going. And you're like, okay, oil is here. Well, oil was to the right, which was bearish. And now it's neutral here, but it is moving right to left. So you could argue it's, it was bearish, now it's neutral, and maybe it's turning bullish. Well, you could, you could say that. And then you drop into this, and it's not technically bullish yet, in my humble opinion. Okay? But if you wanted to be a bull... Oh, look at this. My drawing tool's not working either. Wow. Did it, was there a window update? Nothing is working. Epic and, and that. Nothing's working today. Nothing's right, I'm told. Something weird is Windows. I guess uh, time to reboot, huh? Johnny says, does the page need to be refreshed uh, during the day for that? No. No, Johnny. It's automatic. Lufli tulumum. All right, good. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a web page. It's not a web page. That's the thing. It's not a web page. It's a live database. So just to make the one gauge work, we need six different data feeds. And then it needs to be analyzed. Okay. Oh, thank you, Arve. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Thank you. I know you know, and I know you know that I know that you know. So I appreciate that. Cool. Anyways, good. We got this going. So look, this is still possible. In fact, that's the trend that's going on here, right? The trend is really sideways. I know, right? Um, but what if this occurred in the future? Then that would be a meaningful buildup, I think. Partially because what I just showed you briefly, and of course everybody at Quantbox already has seasonality, but uh, maybe maybe this goes this way in the future. Okay, and now the the way you have to think about oil. Oh, and by the way, everyone with an investor bootcamp membership has access to the oil trading course, which is only sixteen hours long, and I honestly believe it's university level quality like you will learn 
more than you can imagine about the oil industry. More than you can imagine. Literally, we're going through contracts, oil lease contracts, for example. Um, like, really amazing stuff. But what you have to think about is, why would it go up? Because refineries need to start making products like heating fuel. You don't wait till it's cold to make heating fuel. And who buys WTI? This is WTI. Who buys WTI? Do you own any WTI? No. Okay. Refineries buy WTI and then they, 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 they crack it. For example, they blend it, they do, they do a bunch of things to it to make certain products. So they actually manufacture a product like heating fuel. So they have to analyze in the future, when will heating fuel demand increase? And when should we make heating fuel so that there's time to like store, store it for a while? and then start distribution so that it goes to, I don't know, uh, 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 a company that provides heat. <laughs> they need fuel, right? So anyway, so um, they're always months ahead, right? So if it's going to get cold in November, maybe on August, September, October, we don't know, but somewhere around then, they start that process. And demand for WTI picks up. It's not like they're making gasoline for the driving season. Because you're like, dude, it's summer. Everyone needs gasoline. They made that in February, March, April, May. Okay. Okay. Same thing with uh, retail. The factories are making... Uh, 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 wool sweaters right now. And you know, as soon as we get to, what, September back to school, as soon as that's over, by September 15th, they'll, they'll have winter clothes on the shelves at Target. Sorry, Target. Okay, anyways. So uh, maybe that's in the future, eh, bro? I don't know, but I don't see it now. Uh, so uh, I need a breakout pullback. Now that's daily. Um, you could be trading this uh, on a four hour as a bull, uh, not as a bear. Up, 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 down, down, buy, up, 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 down, down, buy, up, 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 down, down, buy, okay? What we don't know is if this comes up, but we can deal with it that then. Okay, we don't know if that's going to happen. Don't worry about it yet. If you're worried about it, then don't trade it. My, oh my WTI, gold is up today. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. That's a risk on. One thing that changed, uh, I think it was Williams. At uh, where's where is he from? Uh, the New York Fed. He uh, he says that uh, it's possible we don't even go into recession. So that could be some risk on. We're going to go into the blackout period pretty soon. The other thing for risk on, folks. Uh, I believe uh, earning season starts this week, and I would expect uh, earning results to be good. Okay, and that could be risk on. I also expect companies to say it was second quarter was good, but we think the rest of the year or next year will be less good. I don't know how they're going to say it. Okay, well, Descartes says, what do I think about a soft landing? I'm going to talk about that Tuesday at 10.30 a.m. 
And what I think is irrelevant, so we'll go through the data, and then we'll make our own determination. Okay? Did I give you the link for that? I don't know if I gave you the link. Let me post it again so you have access to that. Okay? You don't have to be a subscriber to QuantBox. It's open to everybody. And uh, it will be recorded, and it, the recording will be available for 15 days after the event, and then it disappears forever. Which is pretty good because I rented Cannonball Run 2 on Amazon the other day for, for four bucks. And they're like, you have 30 days to watch it or to start it. And then 24 hours after you start it, it goes away. I'm more generous. Yeah. Cannonball Run 2. Lamb Lamborghini Countach. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so anywho, uh, I, I'm still a bear on this, me personally. So gold has been up for a day or two or three. Okay, fine. Um, I'm not there yet as a buyer. So I either don't buy it or I sell it. And it's a bit early to sell it, but I'm okay. I'm cool. I'm cool. Um, one more up day and then maybe down the rest of the way. I don't know. Notice the 200 EMA. What that means is we're actually market neutral. That's the fair market value for gold or uh, yeah, for gold. Um, isn't it nice? Isn't it interesting that we haven't gone more than, what, 25 cents below? Is that right, Johnny? What are they doing in a Tesla? Yeah. Oh, Audi A6, huh? I have really good news. I tuned up the Porsche, and now I get 13 miles to the gallon. 13 and 13.6, uh, I think. I went from 11 to 13.6. Which means uh, I could... I could cross the United States faster, but I'd have to stop every three hours to put more gas in the tank. <laughs> that's, that's what happens when you have a V8 Porsche. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. No fuel efficiency. So anyways, uh, I still believe in my trade plan, I, I, and uh, it hasn't failed, in my humble opinion. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. But I think I want to start importing cars from Dubai. Does anybody have an experience doing that, importing cars from Dubai into the United States? Or do you know someone that'll do it for me where I can just say, buy this car or I buy it and they import it for me? Do you know anybody that just does that? I mean, here it is. I just bought this. Bring it in. I don't know about shipping. I don't know about taxes. Uh, I don't know about do I have to change anything on the vehicle? Is there a vehicle test to get it certified? Like, how do I register it? I imagine it comes into Miami and then what? Can I drive it home? What do I need to do to make it legal? And if you know anybody that does any of that or can point me in the right direction, please let me know. Mm. 
I imagine somebody does it. So anyways. All right. So now we've busted out of this kind of middle point. Let's go to the daily. Yeah, Hunt, Hunt says, uh, yeah, they're cheaper to buy and to buy. Yeah, but then I might find that there's a 40% import tax. So, like, I knew somebody, uh, he was French, and um, he would come to the United States, in particular, this is when I lived in California, and he'd buy rare Porsches that were made in Germany, but made for the U.S. market. So, for example, I believe they were all convertibles. And they're like, you don't drive convertibles in Germany. <laughs> it's cold all, the, in the, all, all winter, right? But So they were made for the California market. And I'm talking like the 60s, right? So he would go to the United States. He'd buy, a, buy these cars and then have them dismantled and put in boxes. And I said, why are you doing that? And he's like, well, when you import them back to Europe... Um, because he was French, but he'd bring them to France, reassemble them, and then sell them to Germans, right, that wanted California Porsches. So anyways, uh, he said, if I bring them back as a car, it was something like close to 100% tax. So they're like, oh, you paid 50 grand for it? Okay, it's it's 50 grand tax. So now you're into it for 100 grand, right? You're like, oh, my God. But if it came back as car parts, used car parts, the ta there was no tax. So he'd dismantle the car. Well, I don't want to dismantle my, you know, G-Wagon G Brabus. <laughs> but, you know, so what do I need to do? So they might be cheaper to buy, but not to bring back, right, Hunt? So if, any, if you know anybody or how to do it, point me in the right direction. I'd appreciate that. All right. So if we get rid of this, let's just analyze where we are on the daily, okay? Up, 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 down, down, buy. Up, 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 down, down, buy. Up, 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 up. Now, this is a hard and fast buy because now you're riding the, the five. Up, 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 right? Okay. And then the slowdown. Is it really a slowdown? No, just back to the 21. Up, 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 down, down, back to the 21. And this is an up, 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 dude. This is like bullish and like ridiculously aggressive bullishness. Okay. Okay. Oh la la. Okay. Let's take a look from a weekly point of view. Okay. Should we pay attention to the top top? Okay. I'm going to get rid of that because that was based on an if then, but we don't have the if yet. So anyways. Uh, holy smoke. So just, it is red hot. Okay. It is red hot. No doubt about it. Oops. Let me bring that back over. Red hot faux show. Uh, Bitcoin. I got to watch. I'm sitting on one of those. Uh, yeah. Up would be great today. That would be risk on. Okay. Looking at the daily. See, on a short term, it's, you're like, man, nothing's going on in this world. Hang on. Let me, okay. You're like, man, nothing's going on. That's cray cray. It is cray cray. You want some calm and peace in your life? I'll give you some calm and peace. If you're a bull, okay, if you're a bull, up, 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 okay, now it moves sideways until the 21 catches up, and then we go this way, okay? 
That's easier than a double top scenario because you got to get everyone from wanting to be long to be short. Okay. Cool. Hey, if you were a QuantBox subscriber, would you want a page on Bitcoin dollar? Would you like me to add Bitcoin as an asset class? Add it as a commodity? Oh, well, I don't know if that's possible. Hmm. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. We'll see. Right. Yeah, we'll ask Dr. Evil. Hey, Dr. Evil, can you add some Bitcoin dollar to Quantbox? Scotty do. Yeah. I know, child from the 90s, huh? Jeez, what a 90s guy. All right, uh, so we did my oh my WTI. We said uh, gold, we'll do some, like the biddy again. Uh, it's kind of weird, like I wouldn't be surprised if risk off showed up, but I own Bitcoin, so I wanted to go up. So I'm so confused. Um, yeah, anyways, an update would be great. An update would be great. Somebody said this week, I can't remember who it was. Somebody said Bitcoin to 120,000 next year. And I thought about it. And when, you know, can you still get filthy, stinking rich trading crypto? Or in this case, Bitcoin, which is the last crypto in the United States. Um, I Only with leverage, huh? Only with leverage. Yeah, well, I'm not there yet, right, Pete? Yeah. Yeah. We're not there yet, but uh, maybe someday. But the thing is, I, I was looking at it like, okay, it's going to go from 30,000 to 120,000. 4x, okay, 400 percent. You you'd have to invest a lot for it to be meaningful. So if I bought one Bitcoin for thirty thousand, and I went to one hundred twenty thousand, it wouldn't change anything. For I don't know, I was just I could probably do better somewhere else with thirty grand. <laughs> like that's it. Uh, so it doesn't change anything. Uh, it. It would have been great if I bought Bitcoin at two hundred dollars and had it go to one hundred twenty thousand, right? But so f people have to buy it at thirty thousand with jacked up on leverage, um, and we we know what happens to them. So it, to me, it's just a, a tradable asset class uh, where you you'll probably do better just trading it day in and day out with some seasonality and some fundamentals. But to me, it, it it's only a tradable asset class. And it's only impressive if it goes up 400% if you invest a lot of money. And you probably just, there's, I don't know, easier, less speculative ways of making money. That's all. Uh, yes, actually, Richard. So the hedge fund that I'm starting um, does have... Uh, derivative uh, derivatives built into the strategy. Yeah, for sure. Right? Like, I'm trying to almost build a pension scheme. I'm not I'm not building a pension screen scheme. I'm building 
uh, a personal endowment fund. But a pension scheme might say, uh, I will guarantee you uh, 8% a year. Okay, so, okay, then what? Well, after 8%, the other firm keeps 100%. But, but to earn that, this is guaranteed. So anyway, so they get some insurance and they do some other kind of wrappers on this and they protect themselves to make sure. But then after that, they go for it and okay and they may not actually guarantee eight they might guarantee six or five and the but after that they get a hundred percent of everything and you're like well but you're guaranteeing somebody a cash flow at five percent and uh under normal circumstances that might be great and it's enough to live on or something like that you know what i mean so uh, i see that and those products are available to people i just want to provide something better so what I'm thinking is instead of the guarantee, I'm like, I like, I can't guarantee. I don't know what the market's going to do, okay? But I do want to try to, to generate somewhere between 8 and 12% income, okay? Design the portfolio using derivatives to produce 8 to 12% irregardless of the stock market going up or the stock market going down. But through the use of derivatives, I'm going to try to produce the 8 to 12%. But then you know what everyone says, right? They're like, oh, you're going to try. Yeah. You're going to try, but you're going to pay yourself first and all this stuff. You're like, you're going to try, but you're not going to do it. And then I take the risk and you play with my money. And, and then you, you only get four and then you're going to take fees off of that. So I get less than four. And you're like, yeah, yeah, you're going to try. Yeah, thanks, buddy. And then I'm like, Okay, well, then what if we said, I'll give you the first 8%. I'll give you 100% of the first 8%. So if the fund only earns 7% that year, you have 100% of the 8 uh, of this 100% of the 7 and I get 0% of the 7. Oh. You mean you'll pay me that first, Wayne? Yeah. And then you'll catch me up. And then after that, we'll split it 80-20 for you. You get 80%. And you're like, dude. So if there's upside beyond, I get 80% of that? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, well, yeah. So we do this in venture capital. You're not going to see it a lot in in hedge funds. Uh, well, it depends. It depends on the type of hedge fund, I suppose. But it, it's a concept that comes from venture capital. Okay? And, well, I was a venture capitalist. <laughs> so uh, I think about structuring deals like that. Because you have a general partnership, which is the uh, manager. Okay, the general partners are the management team, M and team. And then they go out and raise money from the limited partners. Okay, and these are the investors into the fund. Okay, but they don't put money into the general partnership. So the way that it works is you have these LPs, okay? So the general partnership, oops, okay, manages a fund, okay? And the LPs invest into the fund, okay? As well as the GPs, okay? Cool. So the general partners manage the fund, these parties, okay? And so when the general partners raise money from the limited partners, the limited partners say, okay, I'll give you a million dollars, but I have opportunity one, I have opportunity two, 
and you're my opportunity three. So I could just buy bonds and earn 4%. I can buy the stock market, which can earn 8 to 10% a year on average, but it could be an up year. I could earn 20, but I take the risk that it could be down 20. So let's average this out and say, in this case, I'll use my 8%. Let's say I have all these different opportunities. I could, I could have a safer investment from you, but only earn 4 by buying risk-free assets. What kind of risk-free asset? How about a 10-year T-note right now pays 4%. So I could just buy a 10-year T-note and earn 4%, guaranteed, and get my million dollars back in 10 years, okay? Or I could put it in real estate, or I could put it in the stock market, or I can put it somewhere else. Why should I put it in option three, which is venture capital? Why should I do that? And I say, well, I'll cover your opportunity cost. Which means, how about I pay you the first 8%? Okay. You see? I'll pay you so you got your opportunity cost. And after that, then I get paid. And then after that, we split. You just get your, first, your share first. So that when you look at our opportunity, it's just as good as opportunity two. It's better than opportunity one, but opportunity three, you would say, well, why would you pick three over two? It's the same as two plus potential upside. It's a two plus, not two total. So you're like, it's just as good, but with some upside. Well, hell's bells. So now the limited partner pops in the money. See? So this is where the world I come from 20 years ago. So I'm like, well, why don't I do that? If I want to design a fund that's amazing for my client base, how would I structure it so that they they win? They get a let's say they even get a better deal. What if what if I was so strange as a human being, I say, what would be the better deal for the limited partners? And I figured if I just treated limited partners ridiculously well, unbelievably well, shamefully well, stupidly well, I don't think I'll have a problem finding limited partners. What if I design a business model like that where it's like, dude, you dude, you're creating more value than you're charging. Well, then I will grow. Okay? So anyways, cool, right? Cool. That's my goal. I'm going to create something stupid for f not for me. Well, not for you, for me. It wouldn't be stupid. That's too strong. Um, I want to create an unfair deal. One where you, you benefit a lot and I, I do okay. But I want to do it for 25 or 30 years. So I want to, I want to do this till I'm 80. Ah, not 80. 75. Well, you know, but Mark Mobius is 80 and he's loving it. Um, yeah, I want to do this till I'm 80. Yeah, it's the next new thing. I'm doing a lot, but that's the thing. Yeah, I want to do this till I'm 80. And I have a small goal. I'd like to raise a billion dollars. So when I'm 80, I have at least one billion under management. And I know when I wake up in the morning, I'm doing great work for all of my clients. It's like a reason for living. It's not about money. It's about living a quality life. Something that you're like, you're proud of your work. You can't wait to meet your clients. 
if you if you know a money manager, if you know a, a financial advisor, when the phone rings, they hide under their desk. Oh my God, that's a client calling. Hide. Because they don't have to explain, well, the markets are down, just ride it out. Just ride it out. Oh, don't get out now. It's just market timing. Because they're, they're all about sucking on your 1% and golfing all day. Their degree is in sports marketing, not in, fu in finance or economics, right? So I want to do the opposite where I want to get together almost like Warren Buffett, huh? How he has a conference and thousands of people line up and they just want to meet him and be near him and talk to him. I want to be near and talk to you knowing that I'm managing your, your wealth and, and I treat you like I love you and that you're, I'm caring for you and we're all happy. Like what an amazing existence that would be. So let's do it. All right. Let's get off of that. Let's move on to this. Okay. Look at that. We kicked off our role reversal. And the target, if you are buying RAND, you're getting paid swap. Okay. Risk on, which is dollar weakness. And that takes us all the way down to maybe as far as 17. Not likely, but maybe, certainly 17 and a half-ish. Yeah, Richard's like, he's only 35, so he's got time. Yeah, well, someone's going to inherit the book, right? A firm with a billion dollars AUM, they're not actually, I mean, in the finance world, that's not even a lot of money. So, like, I know people, several groups of people that have three, four hundred million, and they're considered tiny. So a, a decent, a decent shop, let's say, especially with retirement money. A billion is a drop in the bucket. Okay. There are firms out there um, that manage retirement money. You know, they have a trillion under management, like a trillion, a thousand billion. You know, 50 billion is, is a small shop. One billion is tiny. So, you know, it's not necessarily the AUM, but it's... What you do is you got to have a target and you move forward. So what that would force you to do is if you're, that's your business model is get out and meet as many people as possible. That's what it's about. Shake some hands, kiss some babies. It's like getting elected, right? It's like meet people that need your help re retiring with dignity. That's what I want to do. That's my business model. Help people retire with safety and dignity. Safety and dignity. That sounds like a, a good meaningful life, right? Yeah. So anyways, that's my goal. All right. All right. All right. All right, so now let's switch over if there's risk on. What about the other stock markets? Uh, stabilization at the bottom for the FTSE. We've already identified that price as, a, as the stabilization price. S&P 500 is now at the top of the range. So technical analysis of this data set says, be careful, bulls. You might have a day or two left, but be careful. Technically, this might get challenging again. Okay. Aussie is finally going up again, but really at the bottom of the range. You're like, but Wayne, the range is down here. That's two standard deviations. Uh, I think if we measured the same period. Oh, wrong one. Let me get rid of that. 
um, if we measure the same exact data set with this tool, okay, uh, get the slope same. Okay, you know, it's about right. If you, if you want to look at that, it's not really doing a standard devi uh, one and two standard e deviations, but you can think of it as a, uh, uh, the wider one's conservative and the, the smaller one's more aggressive of, you know, the, of the time series. Um, you are at the mean, but uh, I, I think you might, okay, look at the future more like that. Okay, CPI, yeah, it's important, yeah. Well, Luis, ask yourself this. Um, when we go to the S&P 500, let's just bring that back up and let's talk about it for a second. Okay. When people bought it, let's, let's, go, let's go further back. Okay. When people bought it here, this is seasonal. I can show you exactly why that would go up okay and then this is what's interesting not this this is expected if you don't know that then you need to subscribe to Quantbox. it's that simple you don't know that then you don't know how the market works it's just that simple um i plan for stuff like that every year so anyways um Let's look at this. What is interesting about this? Well, investors of the stock market, those who invest and make money professionally in the stock market, have to buy the stock market. They don't get paid unless they buy the stock market. Okay, so why would you buy the stock market in this period? First of all, there is some seasonality to this. But bigger is that when you buy the stocks, you want to look at like the price is the biggest determinant because you've already made a decision that you want to buy. So you're already a bull. You want to buy a dip, all that kind of stuff. So the, the thing is the price and time. And you might do like absolute price. Okay. You might do a ratio like... Uh, price over earnings, which gives you another measure so you can compare 10 companies versus their, their price over their performance. Okay? Um, and there's some other determinants, but it's all about price, isn't it? So back then, compared to historical averages, stocks were cheap in this period okay they were cheapest here but that's the riskiest but it's also the norm so now you got the big pullback and then you're not sure and then it rallied up and now you're like oh my god these things are risk on and then it dropped back and then it double bottomed okay so now you got your time issue you're like ooh, a, a bottom here so now you're only as a remember you're a long only stock trader, which is most performing, uh, most hedge funds, for example. Okay. And okay. So you got this, then you got the higher high. You're like, Oh my God. And now you got this double bottom. Should you buy it or not? And you're like, well, I only make money if I'm long and I have other people's money. So honestly, I don't even care. <laughs> right. So my money, I I'm paid to put this to work. So you're thinking here, if this holds, I want to buy, and basically, whatever your measure of value, whatever your measure of price, it's cheap relative to historic norms. The price per earnings might be 15x, and you know, uh, and some of these things have gone to 30x, right? So here's what I'm getting at. Now the same people want to make a decision here. But what if it was 30x or 25? Let's make it more like 
25. And if you go NASDAQ instead of S&P 500, it might be 30x. I, I don't know. I'm just making these numbers up. And then you're like, well, I don't really want to buy the, the NASDAQ. I just want to buy Apple and Google and Facebook. And they might be 40x or whatever the number is. Like, all of a sudden, like, now you want to get in the game. Like, or let's not make it that. Let's change the narrative. Where's the new money going to come from? Are, is more money going to come in the market when it's not cheap? Because if new money doesn't come in, then it won't go up. You understand? So what needs to happen? Okay. S step one Take profit. Okay? And this is easier to stand, uh, understand when it comes to the stock market because that would make the stock market fall. This is, it's harder for Forex traders to understand this concept, but when you think of the stock market, it's easier. Price would fall, but nobody is selling. Like, bears are not selling. Some will, obviously. But it's the market, the price is falling because bulls are selling. They're taking profit. That's just a bullish sell. It's not bears selling. It's not short sellers. It's just simply price coming down. And what would a bull want to do later? Well, if they bought it here cheap, they want to buy it down here for less expensive. So what happens is they sell some things, but not everything. They don't sell, they don't sell what they bought here, and they didn't, they, they won't sell what they bought here, but everything up here they'll take some profit on. Go to cash, the stock market falls for a month or two, and then and I, I have a guess when, but then they buy it back, targeting 5,000. So it falls to four, we go to five. Hey, coach, ever since that meeting where you assigned us to read meeting minutes, I've gotten more in the habit of looking at them and reading them more frequently. Very, very, very cool. It's cool because you're informed. You know what will happen is the more you're informed, if when you read the media, let's say read a newspaper, read a blog post, um, see something on TV, or dare I say, listen to a YouTube guru, what you will find is you'll probably disagree more and more with other people. And it's an important distinction not to be argumentative, but you did the work. This is like the backbone of everything that I try to teach and preach. I preach to teach because some of you never had this, right? Why is it important? You actually do the work. You actually go line by line through the data. You think about it. You take notes. You highlight this and highlight that and write that down. You think about it and you express that in an opinion or a bias and then some other market participant, a guru, a trader, an analyst, a, a, some talking head on TV, a, a, an econ reporter, reports something, and you're like, what? You look at what their analysis is, and you're like, how the heck do they get to that conclusion? And then it will dawn on you one day 
that they're a well-read blog poster. They're a well-viewed YouTuber. They work for a di big newspaper. They work for a big bank. They're a, a, a wealth uh, or ma money manager on CNBC or Bloomberg. And you look at it and you're like, oh my God. It's apparent to me that they haven't actually done the work. And you won't believe it at first. You just won't. You're like, there's no way they work for such a big firm, a prestigious paper. They're, there's no way they're on TV. There's no way they manage a billion dollars. And they're just up there talking shit on TV. But you'll see it over and over again. And you'll know because you actually did the work. You actually went line by line. And you will know the truth. And you know, and, and that's funny. I mean, that's what Harvard teaches. Veritas is simply the truth through knowledge. Veritas. Okay. Illuminate. The truth through knowledge. Right? The guiding light in a world of darkness. The Illuminati. Okay? I'm lamping, I'm lamping, I'm cold stone lamping. Yeah, so anyways, so good for you. Honestly, um, that's, that's, that's it. That's it. That's what I want for you. For you to do the research and have the truth. And from that, I hope you gain the confidence... Um, for you to make better decisions and carry them out. Yeah, no, absolutely my pleasure. Yeah, is there even a uh, search emojis? Yeah, there it is. Illuminate. They have a new Illuminate lamp. <laughs> it was so funny. Uh, the Harvard Alumni Association gave me a lamp like that. And it was like $2 worth of plastic, 50 cents worth of plastic. I'm like, really? You couldn't even get me like a cheap brass lamp? <laughs> like not even a cheap brass lamp. I know when you're in, in in a third world country and uh, they they you you know uh, you know and you go into the store you're like it's literally two bucks. They're like oh here's a lamp, yeah oh right, you buy it for two bucks right the the brass souk in Dubai like really you gave me a plastic one but. Cool. Oh, my phone keeps beeping. Yeah, cool. All right, so much to do. What an amazing world. What a time to be alive. The future's so bright, got to wear shades or turn off the webcam. <laughs> I got to... I think I need to reboot my machine. Oh, this is the chart. All right, so one of the things I'm working on, and I have a meeting actually in 40 minutes with the development team that works for me out of Hong Kong, which I actually believe is out of mainland China probably. But anyways, uh, their address is Hong Kong. Um, I am teaching artificial intelligence on how to trade. And uh, this is how I'm teaching it to to how to look at the market. See ya, Johnny. Okay. And uh, cool, right? How, if you had to describe this with words, now I've had to describe this using mathematics. 
But I'm asking artificial intelligence to look at the market this way. What do you see? Now, the first thing that I teach you, if you read that book of mine, is it, do I still have it? Uh, yeah, it's over here. Okay. If you read that book of mine, that book, of, by the way, I make like no money on this book. I don't even, I don't even cash the checks if I get a check because it's, I don't know. I, uh, <laughs> they're so small. I don't, I, I don't promote this because I'm going to make a lot of money. Uh, I spent something like $150,000 on the launch party. I don't, I don't think I made $150,000 selling the book, right? So honestly, um, in this book, what I teach you, or one of the things I teach you right away is the first thing is you look at the trend. It's a form of bias. So that book doesn't cover, uh, it covers fundamentals, but it doesn't call, cover macroeconomics. There's a difference, but anyways. Um, trend. What direction is the trend and how strong? I actually do speed and direction, but you can do strength and direction. It's the same thing, right? Anyways, what direction is this trend, but how do you measure the trend? Okay, but at the very least, when when uh, when I develop when you develop a trade plan, I want Aiden the AI because remember I he has a real name because he helps you. He's Aiden Traders, Aiden, Aiden Traden, <laughs> Aiden they Aiden those who are trading. Uh, anyway, so. The thing is, what is the direction? Mathematically, there are multiple ways to calculate, and I'm actually going to calculate it multiple different ways. But nonetheless, Aiden has to look at it and say, it's currently bullish. So if you threw down a sell trade plan, well, we might have to caution you, or look at the market completely differently. Now, if you were bullish on this, it would say, okay, it is currently in an uptrend. We agree with you or he agrees with you. The AI, the machine, agrees with you. It would also highlight a buy zone, aka the green zone, and the target. Do I have a course? It's called Investor Boot Camp. Do I have a course? Uh, I've, I've been running that show for 20 years. Do I have a course? Yes, it's $88 though. Yeah. Yeah, it's $88. Covers trade planning, swing trading, Forex basics, principles of price action, introduction to Forex trading, complete guide to MT4 and MT5, central banking essentials, day trading methodology, macroeconomics, oil investing, and then these are on their way because these are what people want to do next. I will probably do, I didn't do a summer school this year, so I'll probably do fall school, <laughs> autumn school. So, so we might do something in September. Uh, it's, it's right now... I, it, the website, because I'm going to do the new ones, says 100, but honestly, it's only 88 hours. Only 88 hours. This is what it looks like inside. It's nice. Yeah, we will do global stock market indices. Absolutely, for sure. Here's the training courses. Here's one on central banking. Okay. Okay.
Cool, right? So look at this. Lesson three. It's an hour and 22 minutes. And we're going to cover how to manage the balance sheet at a commercial bank. One, uh, one an hour and a half. How many bonds we need to buy? An hour and a half. Just this one. So the original time. deposit, someone deposited 10,000 bucks in the Bank of America. Then Bank of America decides to lend out $9,000. And that gets positive, doesn't it? Okay, so $9,000. So how about this? Why would someone buy nine, uh, borrow nine? All right, so you're going to. It's cool, right? Somebody showed up with $10,000 in cash and put it in the bank. But do you see that it's actually growing? Well, in this case, it's not necessarily wealth. We're getting there, Nuno. What's happening is money is being created. Not currency, because they're not printing cash. But the money supply in the economy is growing. This is why a poor country stays poor, because they don't trust their government, they don't trust their bank, the financial system um, isn't mature, the capital markets aren't mature, there's nowhere to put your money anyways. So you hold your, your money for the future, right? Your, your excess reserves, so you have some money to pay for your rent and your power bill and some food. Right, but the rest you got to save for a rainy day, so you put it into a, a coffee can and bury it in your backyard. Okay, so this goes on and on and on and on, round and around and round, round and round, deposit, loan, deposit, loan, deposit, loan. So this is kind of what it looks like. Okay, down, down, down. There's the spreadsheet. Down, da, down, da, down, down, down. Deposit, 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 deposit. But you have to go through like 50 times. Okay. So how much money was created? What's the increase in, in money supply? Or how much, how much money did the $10,000 grow to? I'll teach you how to calculate it if you want. Because this is what central banks do guys they say in a different way they say we want anyways love it i, I want to watch this again <laughs> sorry i'm an economist i love this that's a fractional reserve banking system okay valuations for indices uh, uh i mean a valuation for a company but for an indice i don't know i haven't created it richard but uh we will create one okay anyways if there's risk on today um usd kitty cat looks kind of interesting doesn't it do you guys think we'll have risk on today That out of the way. Are we going to have risk on today? I mean, that's all you have to decide on, right? Risk on brings USD CAD down. And that might be happening. We don't know yet. Oops, where's my... Okay. We don't know yet, but I think this is ticked over from the middle to a little slightly more risk on. It's still mixed, but it ticked over a little bit, huh?
So yeah, we're not there yet, but that could be the trade plan. Whoa. Hoorah! Okay, what else we got going on? Uh, we can look at yen pairs. And my pound yen hit target. So I'm still here. Oops. Okay, my entry is in here. The current high of the week is here. Based on everything I teach you at Investor Boot Camp, the, the best price for your target that you could possibly expect is this price. That's the aggressive target. This is the conservative target. Okay, Conservative target for the week, aggressive target. We have completed that pattern. So I could just get out now and make 200 pips. But of course, my goal for these are for you to learn, not make money. Anyways, the next thing that is likely to happen, I don't know if it will happen, is a return all the way back to that central pivot. I'd say 82.50 to 83. So if I was a swing trader, I would have already taken profit. Then you say to me, but Wayne, uh, how do you know it's going to stop there? Why not, you know, this? Well, I cover that in the training course, too. We call it the law of averages. Okay, it's not what you think is might happen now. It's what would you do if you saw this situation a thousand times? Should you have a random response to each 1,000 situations? Or should you have a consistent response to all 1,000? And if it's, you're consistent in all those actions, what's the outcome? And what will happen is you will probably see maximum efficiency or near the you know, maximum efficiency frontiers curve. So you'd get like a chart like this, and uh, some, and it'd probably look like this, and you know you want to land on, on somewhere on this curve, and uh, some of the times you take profit, and sometimes you don't take profit, and uh, you can get randomness, or you average the whole thing out for maximum efficiency. On the long run. So anyways, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so that one's up a couple hundred pips. Uh, this uh, I have coming down, uh, oh, I don't know, another 150 to 250 pips. We'll see. Okay, noise. Uh, we can take a look at kitty cat. Um, and you, you want, might want to line this up with the other trade, the USD CAD. So this could come down a little bit more, one more day maybe, and then maybe go this way, but that would make USD CAD do that, which we've already looked at. Cool. USD yen. Okay, all the way down, 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 down. To support. Check this out. Monthly support, weekly support. Okay, you want me to do gold? Again? Yeah, why not? Okay. Gold is up today, but 
to me, technically, it's still not an uptrend. So for this, for me to get kind of in on this uptrend, I'm going to need something like this. Maybe even something better than that. Fundamentally, I believe we're in a disinflationary period. I believe the Fed's going to raise interest rates. They're going to continue raising interest rates. They're going to keep interest rates high. All of that, uh, and, and for longer than what's priced in. So that will create, over the next three years, disinflation. So why the heck would you need to hedge inflation? So I'm really a bear on this. But right now, it is not down, but in my humble opinion, it's also not up. But that's me. Now, if you're trading on a 15-minute chart, well, then you do you. Trade the noise, trade the vol. So you're trading volatility, which is fine. It's perfectly fine. You can do it. I'm not poo-pooing on it. But I'm trying to tell you that I, I'm trying to tame volatility. I'm not trying to trade volatility. So right now, you might look at it from this point of view, and I already have all this drawn on my chart. I mean, so I get, I get it, but I'd rather take this down. I'd rather get a lower high, and I'd rather have it go this way and then sell it. I don't, I, I can't tell you that that's probable, so I have to wait. Okay, but you can see I already got it, right? Like you can see this dotted line. That's the mean. Okay, that's the very, right? The um, variance on the low side. This is the highest variance on the upside. Okay, so what do you do with this? You can calculate this variance the highest high from the average price, the lowest low in this period from the average price. So you get the variance, you square root that variance and you get your standard deviation. You standardize the deviation over time. That's not quite right, where is it going? A little more time, it looks like. Uh, let me line that up. There we go. So now the standard deviation. So you can see it's measuring variance. So let me put those back. The lowest low sloped. Okay. So you, you still have to create the, the rise over the run. Oh, and I see it. I don't have quite I don't have it quite right. You still have to calculate the rise of the run of the mean. I don't know what it's calculating. It's a little off. What's it doing? Anyways, I can't get the exact same data set. Um, but it, it's pretty close. All right, so you have to calculate the mean price, and then you have to calculate the rise over the run. So this is the run over time. How much does it rise? Okay, so now that's slope, which is M. M equals rise over run. Okay, then you take the lowest variance and the highest variance and then slope it to the mean. So now you have that rise over run equal to the rise over the run of the mean. Now And then you calculate the distance from that mean and the slope and then you square root it, and now you get one standard deviation. So you're standardizing this deviation, not just the lowest low and the highest high, but how far over time, right? So anyway, so now you get this is another level, and then this as another level, and it worked pretty good. Through the standardization of the deviation. Oh, thank you, Daniel. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I forgot because I was saying the other day, oh, we're going to do an event in Singapore or Hong Kong. 
Uh, I am doing a meetup event uh, September 13th in Austin, Texas. How many people want to meet up in Austin, Texas for a cocktail? Uh, uh, for a cocktail. Anybody? Austin, Texas, downtown near the Capitol, near the Capitol building. Yeah, well, don't skip the wedding, huh? Talk about a lifetime of regrets. <laughs> Like, dude, how come you couldn't come to my wedding? Oh, well, I went to see, like, uh, this YouTube social influencer. And you're like, dude. <laughs> it's so funny. They would never forgive you. They're like, was it Mr. Beast? No. By the way, I bought some Prime yesterday, if you know any of that story going on. My, my wife's like, what's that? And my kids are like, oh, <laughs> they know exactly what that's all about. Uh, and not because it's Prime Day. No, no, it's an energy drink associated with YouTubers. But anyways, yeah. All right, nobody else coming to, hunk, uh, to uh, Austin, Texas? You know, I'm thinking I want to do a meetup every quarter. I want to do something. Um I, I think we should do the next one either in Hong Kong or in um, uh, or not next one soon. I want to I want to get to Hong Kong or Singapore uh, or both. Wouldn't that be cool? Uh, Singapore, I want to do like let's do that in January, February. I went to visit Daniel out there. I can't remember the time of year. I think it was winter. And it was freezing cold here in uh, Atlanta, if I remember correctly. And then I think it was the trip where I had to change planes in uh, Shanghai. And it was freezing cold. Uh, or no, it was, it was Beijing, I think. I'm in Beijing, and I'm like, it's freezing cold as I'm changing airplanes. You actually had to walk out into the tarmac. I'm like, this sucks. And then, uh, then I get to Singapore, and it's so warm and so humid that in uh, uh, that you can't even see out the hotel window. So I, I was at the top of the Ritz Carlton with these giant windows with the ma the best view of Singapore you've ever seen. Like it's so amazing, and you can't even see out the window. It's so warm and so humid. And so Daniel meets me there, and uh, we are hanging out by the pool, and uh, it's like. 8 30 in the morning and uh, a waiter comes up and he's like uh can i get you gentlemen anything and i'm like i'm like hey I, i'm like two singapore slings hey daniel do you want anything <laughs> so he gets some breakfast snacks we're swimming outside the pool and i'm like it's so warm and it's so beautiful Swimming in the pool at 8.30 in the morning, and it's so warm, and I just left, like, horrible, cold Atlanta, you know, and it's so warm. I'm like, oh, nice. I'm like, Daniel, this makes me so happy. <laughs> so anyways, right? Yeah, so anyways, we should do it, man, but uh, save that for the warmer months. Uh, I'm into doing, um, like I said before, Havana, Cuba. Um, if you're American, don't come to that. I don't want to deal with, deal with your problems, <laughs> but uh, Hey, everybody else is welcome. Right. Uh, um, but we need, where else should we go? Uh, I want to go to London. Um, uh, so we got to do one in London. Oh, can you imagine I can get us into the Oxford club in Mayfair, the Oxford club, like closed door, private club. Uh, you could have been born and raised in London and doubtfully been in that club. 
hey, so let's do it there. Like, there's some cool things we do. Got to get back to New York. Let's do the Harvard Club in New York. I've done it, th what, three times now. We always have a great time. So uh, let's, like, let's try to do one quarterly at least, huh? Where we just get together, have some drinks, do some hugs and some selfies. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to go back to San Francisco where I spent many years and I've been told don't do it. Don't go back. They said it sucks now. <laughs> I'm like, really? They're like, and all your favorite places are probably gone or radically changed. And the places that, that were good now are horrible. I'm like, really? And these are like California people. They're like, don't go back place sucks it's been driven into the ground you're like no so anyways I, I i don't know so let's meet up in beverly hills let's go to the beverly hills uh hotel let's do the beverly hills hotel let's do that anyone want to do that meet up at the beverly hills hotel that sounds great we should do that uh, I'm interested in going to uh, the Breakers, West. I think it's West Palm Beach. Yeah, let's go to Palm Beach, man. Okay. <laughs> Up here in Wings. <laughs> Where? So anyways, uh, and I want to do the cruise. Want to do the cruise. So we got a lot to do this year, guys. Are you, you're, you're the Bay Area? Yeah, I know the Bay Area well. <laughs> World Tour Cruise. I don't have that kind of time, Joel. That, that's the other thing, like, the reason I'm kind of hesitating on the cruise. Like, I do want to do it, but it's hard to get a three-day cruise. They're all, they're all designed now for five days and seven days. And I'm like, who the hell is that kind of time? Oh, I guess retired people. I mean, like, seriously, a seven-day cruise? If you have kids, you can't do that. You can't pull them out of school for a week and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's only for retired people or unemployed people, I guess. Yeah. Oh, Santa Barbara's nice, though, too. All right. So anyways, uh, so much to do. We have a very busy year ahead of us. Uh, uh, we need to schedule all this stuff out um, for the next 18 months, really, uh, because I need to write a bunch of books and launch them and stuff. So like just one simple thing we could do is maybe in one particular month, I go to five different cities. Um we meet up at a bookstore, you pre-order the book at the bookstore, then we go out for cocktails and, and, and dinner or something, you know, and just use, you kind of do two things at once because, uh, well, that's what that I need to do stuff like that. I have to do that stuff, right? Um, so anyway, so uh, lots to do. I'm glad that you're doing this with me. Uh, this is a, a great time in history. Uh, I'm very optimistic about the future of the world and of humanity. So if you're around a, a doom and gloom person, uh, let me tell you, um, um, yeah, they might be right, but uh, I believe in humanity and I believe in us and I believe in you. So peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Oh, yeah, we got to do a meetup in Croatia. Huh? Even better than Berlin, Darko. <laughs> right? Let's go somewhere warm. Yeah. Faux show. Yeah. So anyways, uh, you're the greatest.